Welcome everyone. So in this particular example, uh, I'm going to dive into how you can calculate or showcase within your reports information by financial years. But there's one huge difference with this particular piece of analysis and why it makes it so com uh, complex is that we have different customers that we need to showcase data for and those customers all have a different financial year. Okay, so it's not like you can just utilize the financial year column in your date table and then slice and dice by that financial year or that fiscal year because when I select, so you see here I'm selecting different customers that I just, this is just a, a made up example, uh, they all have a different financial year. So their financial year might be between March to February or July to June, etc. And we need to be able to dynamically show by clicking through our customers what the fiscal year is for that particular customer okay and it might look uh i don't actually have it by month and year i, I slim down the dates column a lot um uh, the dates table a lot in this particular example so we're, we're actually looking at it by day but um hopefully with that you'll see um see how this works now let's have a let's just have a quick look at the data model because um this is this is where you actually need to solve um solve this particular uh um scenario okay so we have our customers right we have our customers we have our dates and we have our customer data so that raw data in this particular case is uh just i've got a date i've got a customer id and an amount right now where we can sort of work out um uh, or where we've got to sort of have some sort of um, parameter that sort of shows uh, when a financial year is actually starting um i've, I've come up with a, a a really simple methodology here where I've sort of said okay we have our customer table I mean this is a really slimmed down customer table but at the end of that customer table what I did was I said um, okay let's let's just put in a number a metric of, of like when the financial year started in a particular month right okay so financial year start month so Google is is in March Microsoft's in June and Salesforce is in September right okay and you know, you might think that, okay, you've got to go, you, you might have to do something complex here, like create multiple date tables or multiple financial year columns in your date, in one date table. But the reality is, is that if you set it up like this, it's actually quite simple. And so you just, well, it, it's, it's, it, it makes it much simpler than what it, what it could be, right? And once you see the formula, I'm going to work through it step by step and you're going to um, see, okay, this is, you know, you're going to see that, wow, you know, just with a simple setup, you can actually do quite a lot. Now, the key thing to note here is that instead of doing anything in the date table particularly, I created a brand new table called financial years, okay? And check out how simple this, this particular table is. Because if I, the, I mean, the reason why I created this table is because we do need to somehow capture a value via our selection. So, so all I did was I created this, this table that looks like this, where it has a fiscal year, financial year, and then the actual year that that is, is in, okay? And then I'm going to, this is this is what I deem a supporting table. I'm gonna feed some of these, the selections or the, the metrics that are, that are within this table into a formula so that we can go and create a dynamic calculation, okay? So here is, is, is sort of, um, uh, remember that this fiscal year here is coming from that table that I created. It has no relationship to the data model. So this is basically just showing everything, right? But what if you want to actually dive into financial year 204 Salesforce or financial um, two, uh, financial year 20 for Microsoft and you just want to see the results for that financial year for them in a particular financial year? Well, this is how, you know, this is basically how, how, how you can break down all the data into much smaller pieces um, that are correct, okay? Now what I've got here is I've just got um, some individual calcs because basically what we need to do is dynamically, and, and we'll break it down, dynamically via the selection here and via which, whichever customer we select, dynamically we need to find, okay, well, when was the start date and when was the end date? And if we can find that, then basically we can blank out dynamically all of the dates that sit outside that. Okay, and that's how we are going to um, achieve this dynamic financial year calculation. 
So let's just have a look um, at these particular calculations because, and this is something to sort of bear in mind when when you're working working away um, with this as well in in, in, you know, in in various different scenarios. I mean, this is just just one scenario. If you can blank something out, then it's not going to appear in your visualization. Okay, so if you can find the bounds in which something is meant to showcase, then you can X out or blank out everything outside that. And this is a sort of technique that you can use to do that. And I've used variables here to be able to um, work this for me. So, and, and what, what, what might be useful is, is if I maybe show a contrast here, okay? And, I'll, and I'll, sh I'll, I'll actually show these as a table and we'll see if this sort of um, contrasts what we're actually doing um, better here. So I've got the, so this is the total sales, right? And then I'm going to grab my amounts by financial year and you're going to see there's a lot of there's a lot of gaps right until we actually get to the um, start of the financial year. Um, is this ordered correctly? Uh, what we want to do is we want to show items with no values, with no data, because there's, there's dates where there's no sales. Okay, so the the data is no, there's not a sale every day in this particular data set. I just need to flick this around actually. It's in the right order. Just scroll down. Just to show you, just to show you what we're trying to do here, right? So the very first data point in within this particular month is actually on the 7th of the 6th, right? So in that financial year. And that is 25. Okay, but if I change, then you see that the dates are going to change as well. You know, the financial year start date is now the 1st of September because that is the start date for this financial year for Salesforce in this particular case, in this particular example. Okay, so how did I create those those um, those those bounds, right? The, the start date and the end date. So in this particular case, we'll look at the start date. So really what um, I'm, I'm just I'm just sort of trying to create a date. I'm trying to find the inputs for a date, right? And so. Uh, I know that I need to get to this point. Like, what is the what is the start date? Okay, so I've just got to fill in. Okay, let's find the year and let's find the start month. And if you think about it, we have those pretty pretty easily, right? Because um, when we're selected on a customer, we've got that column which has the financial year start month. So basically, I'm just capturing that information here. And then in the fiscal year, remember in the supporting table that I created, I had a I had a column which gave me the actual year. And so when something is selected here, I can literally just go and capture that year value. And then I'm just inputting them in the date form function. And so I'm saying, okay, well, the year is this one and the month is this one. And then I know that the start date is going to be the first day of the month. So I can just put one and then that gives me the start date. Okay. And then if we look at the end date, it's very similar. All that's happened is that I've gone fiscal year plus one. Uh, and then this, in this particular case, this isn't the actual end date, it's sort of like the very first date of the next financial year, but you'll see in the formula, we can use a less than. And so it's always gonna, if we do a less than, it's always gonna be one day less than this, which is fine because that's gonna be the actual last date. You know, the what, what would it be like the 31st of August or the 30th of August? Um, so, you know, that's how we feed it in. So now we ha have a look at this actual formula here, you'll see that we've done something quite similar. So instead of, I haven't broken those, um, instead of breaking these out into separate formulas i've just put them all into one formula using using variables and then what i've done is, I've, is is this is the most important part of the formula here and you'll see that it's actually not that difficult all i've done is i've said okay if the min so we're working that remember everything is calculated as an individual result here right so this particular result so let's find that there's an actual result so where are we okay so you'll see here that the very first data point is right it's the 4th of september 125 because that is this start month that is the start month of um, this company's financial year okay and so remember this is being calculated if the min date so the min date in this particular result here is just the date is greater than or equal to the start date which is this date here and it is also less than the end date which is this date here, yes, then equal the total amount, which is just the formula which is feeding into here, which is just this measure here. If not equals blank, okay? And that logic there enables us to dynamically, as we click through the financial years into different financial years, it changes the financial year which shows here, but it's also being determined by the financial year bounds of that particular customer.
pretty cool right pretty cool it's a totally dynamic calculation and this this actually came from a real world example uh that uh that a customer of ours um had and we needed to work through a, a, a simple solution um and you know we were going off and the, they were going off in many different directions and you know this is how we settled on on the right the you know, the simplest way to do this right and you got to make sure that your data model set up correctly first as well like you want to have a really simple data model and then you can just feed supporting tables like this in really really easily this part of the formula was just dealing with the total so that the total was dynamic and you can you know within co calculate remember you can change the context of the calculation and we're, we're using similar logic right we're just we're just trying to create context of the dates remember this is for the total because it has one value isolates just for the date and then so that's returning each individual date but this total value down here is determined by um by this where we're, we want to calculate the total amounts but only within the dates which we which are specified for that specific customer okay so really interesting example like a really a slightly more complex one right but that can always be solved with power bi there's nothing you can't do in power bi from an analytical perspective you know i've you there's always a way there's always a way and uh, we found a way here and I think this is a really good example just to review, just to show you, you know, how you can do this specifically if you run into this scenario, because I know a lot have in the past, um, but also just, you know, the, the importance of using variables, setting up your data model correctly, using supporting tables, and then working out some logic that enables you to create a dynamic calculation and a dynamic visualization. So really, really powerful stuff. Okay, I'm going to wrap things up here. I um, hope you enjoyed going through this one. Um, you know, look forward to look forward to getting um, a lot more con content out to you. So, so watch out, watch out for those um, releases very soon. Okay, take care. Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Enterprise DNA TV. If you enjoyed the content covered in this particular tutorial, please throw the video a like. It really helps us, and we really appreciate it. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Enterprise DNA TV channel. Uh, we have a huge amount of content coming out all the time from myself and a range of content creators, uh, all dedicated to improving the way that you use Power BI and the Power Platform. Lastly, check out Enterprise DNA's website, plenty of resources and further learning that you can access very easily. All the best. Take care.